What's up Photography Mafia? In this DxO Photo Lab tutorial, we're going to look at a few advanced concepts of the masking brush as well as look at the auto mask tool. So let's get started. This photo, I took it in the Galapagos Islands. This is an endemic marine iguana. And just looking at the fit view here, this photo looks a little bit soft. But if I was to print it out or export it actually, it would look fine. It's just that this preview render is not that great. But if I go to one to one ratio right here, you can see the image looks a lot sharp. Anyways, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the local adjustments tool or palette right here. I'm going to select the masking brush. And then we have the helper tool right here or the keyboard shortcuts for some of the masking brush or the masking options. We also have the size slider, feather, flow and opacity. And then we can change the mask overlay here if we want, as well as the color. I'm just going to close this here and close this. Before we start masking and adjusting this marine iguana, I do want to show you a few things about the feather, flow and opacity. So I'm going to make sure I'm on the black and white overlay. And you guys probably already know what the feather is, but I'm going to demonstrate it for you. It's just the hardness of the edges or the transition of the edges. So right now it's at zero. So it's going to have a hard edge right here. And actually, let me turn the flow to 100%. We'll talk about flow and opacity in a second. So you can see the edge is pretty sharp here. I'll change the exposure down to minus four just to cook this image. And now I'll show you the feather at 100%. So it has a soft transition along the edges. I'll hide the mask. And then I'll show the mask. And then you can see how it affects the edges of the mask. So I'm just going to reset this here. So feather is pretty easy to understand. So it's changing the size. What's a little bit harder to understand is flow versus opacity. We'll start with the easier one, opacity. So opacity is just the transparency of the mask. So I already reset this mask and I'll keep it 100% and the flow at 100%, but I'll keep the feather at zero. So I'll have hard edges just to demonstrate this a little bit better. So if I click right here, you can see it's at 100% white. So white reveals the effect or the mask and black conceals the effect or the local adjustments. So I'm just going to decrease these exposure to minus four. And I'm going to show the mask. And now if I put the opacity to 50%, you guessed it, it's going to be 50% or neutral gray. And the lowest the opacity can go is to 10% because it doesn't make sense to have it at zero. So this is 100%, this is 50 and this is 10%. Now let's see without the overlay. So now I'm just going to turn on the mask overlay. I'm going to put the opacity back to 100%. And the flow is how much paint or brush you apply to each stroke of the mask. So if I keep it at 100%, this is how we have it. But if I keep it at 50%, it's going to be 50% opacity. So remember, this was already at 50% opacity and 100% flow. So we should have it similar to that. And now if I keep the flow to 10%, we can keep it at 10% opacity. So we can see how it matches up. What gets confusing is when we start combining the flow and opacity at different numbers other than 100%. So for example here, I'm going to brush the opacity at 50% and flow at 100%. So I'm going to click it once here, but this time I'm going to brush. So you can see it's still at 50%. And now I'm going to brush again, and I'm going to brush along the edges. And now we can see it's additive here. But now if I do this, it's also more additive. So I can click it a few times until it gets to like 100%. It's not going to be 50% plus 50% as you can see right here. Now I'm going to go to flow. And now watch what happens with flow at 50%. 
I'm going to click right here. But if I click, hold, drag and paint, you can see it's a little bit different. It just adds a little bit more paint, I guess you can say. If I click like this, it still looks like it's at 100% white. So just remember these flow and opacity, the additions or the additive, the math is a little bit different. You're not always going to get 50% plus 50% is 100%. So let's take a look here. Flow and opacity at 50%. If I click it like this, it does that. If I drag it, if I stroke it, it actually looks like a little bit whiter than this 50%. Then I can just go like this. If I release my mouse, and then press it and click it again. It's adding like another stroke. So just keep that in mind. I'm just holding it and dragging it once. But if I let go of the mouse and click the button or click the left button, it acts differently. It's like another stroke. So just remember that when you're playing with flow and opacity, the additive or the percentage is like a percentage of a percentage until like you get infinitively closer to 100% opacity. I guess that's the best way to do it or you got to eyeball it. So let's take a look or hide this mask and see what we did here. So remember flow is just the strength or the amount of paint you apply according to what the opacity is. So if it's at so 50% flow of 50% opacity is almost like applying 25%. But if you do it like four times, it doesn't necessarily mean you're adding to 100% four times 25. It's like a percentage of a percentage of a percentage. So hopefully that makes sense. But if it doesn't, don't worry about it. The main thing you just got to know is when you're painting, just make sure you have a good feather and then feather away the edges to make a good transition. And then you'll be fine. Because usually when I'm working with flow and opacity, when I'm adjusting this, I always forget like how the math works and I have to play around with it a little bit. But anyways, I'm going to reset this and let's just try to mask this guy here. Obviously, there's other corrections we can do to this image to make it look a little bit better. Before we start painting this guy here, we can hold the control or command key and move the mouse wheel or the scroll wheel on our mouse to change the size of the brush. If we use the shift key and hold it, it'll change the feather just like that. And we can also use the eraser tool. So if I paint right here, let me just change this to 100% and the feather to 100%. If I paint like this and then I click here, I can use the eraser tool. I can go back to the brush tool by pressing shift B. So now I'm back in the brush tool. I can temporarily hold the option or alt key to temporarily activate the eraser tool. So usually the alt or option key is one of the best shortcuts to temporarily activate the eraser tool. I'm going to reset this guy here. So now I'm going to start painting this guy right here. I'm going to do a bad job actually to just demonstrate so we can go to the auto mask. I'll go to one to one actually and I'll keep the feather at 100%. And I think I'm going to keep the flow and opacity 100%. And let me just start painting this guy away. I'm gonna change the overlay to the color overlay so we can see what's happening here. That looks good. That looks good. Right here. And by the way, this marine iguana is very rare. The green and reddish tint. So you guys are in the presence or in the excellence of travel and wildlife photography and you can dislike this video after i just said that comment anyways i'm going to decrease the flow and the opacity i'm going to decrease the size of this brush and zoom in i'm going to decrease it like that and just start painting like this actually i need to change the size of the brush a little bit bigger and usually when you're doing edges you want a harder edge so you can like start painting like this. Obviously, if I wasn't doing this tutorial, it would take more time brushing this guy with the masking brush. And I'll probably be drinking some tea while I'm brushing away. I'll increase the feather. Just start painting like this. 
unfortunately i wasn't good in kindergarten like coloring between the lines let's take a look here so usually having a feather opacity below 100 percent actually sorry a flow and an opacity below 100 percent is pretty good when you're painting or masking edges obviously if you guys are doing this by yourself you will take more time and put a little bit more effort than what i'm doing And really like painting the black skin or the black scale isn't a big deal because it's just going to blend in with the rocks here. So getting the, getting the black scale part is not as much of a big deal here. And one good thing about the feather and putting a flow and opacity below 100% is the edges will look a little bit more cleaner or more natural, I should say. Not cleaner, but more natural. If I start color grading or cooking this marine iguana with a, with a saturation slider, like a barbecue pit master, it'll look a little bit more natural. Okay, anyways, let me go back to this one-to-one -one view, make sure I'm on that. I'm going to hide this mask. Actually, I can't hide it because I haven't applied an adjustment. So let's take a look here. It's not too bad. Okay, so I'm going to reset this exposure slider right here. And another thing I may have missed is explaining this opacity slider. This is another way of changing the overall mask. Just like that. But I'll just keep it at hundred percent and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to let's say the HSL here I'll increase the saturation I'll increase the vibrance I'm going to go to this fit view and let's take a look at the before and after so I'm going to click on this enable disable mask just like that So the change doesn't look that obvious. It's very subtle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually put this up a little bit more just to demonstrate the mask. Just like that. Now you can see it's cooked like a pit master. So I'm going to hide the mask and show the mask. But the one good thing is with the combination of the feather flow and opacity, the edges look pretty good. It doesn't look too hard or anything like that. So to make this image look a little bit more natural, I could decrease the vibrancy, the saturation. What I can also do is I can duplicate this mask. So I'm going to click right here, rename it to Water Dragon because they eat their algae or their food underwater. And then I'm going to click right here I'm going to duplicate this mask right here. I'm just going to make sure this has, uh, let's say outer. And now I'm going to invert the mask. Let me make sure I click here. I'm going to click on this icon right here, invert mask. So now that it's inverted, let me hide this. So we can see the saturation is no longer there. And now the saturation is there. So I'm going to reset this saturation to not reset it, but maybe decrease it a little and the vibrancy and decrease it a little. I'll go to blur and I'll just increase the blur. That's just too much. Maybe I'll increase it to, let's say, I think one, one looks natural right now. Two still looks natural. Let me go to the one to one view, which shows a better view. So this looks pretty natural. 
if I go to three. So no, this doesn't look good. Look at the face right here. So I think I'm gonna go to let's say about two. I think it's better just to use these these buttons right here two no i think one yeah i think one looks a lot more natural let me go to the one to one view so this is where one of those cases where you you have to make sure you have a good you use a good feather flow and opacity to use the edges or mask the edges properly of course there's other adjustments we can do but hopefully this demonstrates how the feather flow and opacity work together, especially the flow and opacity since they're pretty confusing. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to reset this image. I'm going to go back to this fit view and I'm gonna select the auto mask. I can also select it by pressing shift A. Well, actually I have to paint first. So I have to paint then I can press shift A to turn on this auto mask. And for the auto mask, you can see there's no feather, there's no flow or opacity. And how the auto mask works is you just use the plus sign to paint within the lines or paint within the edges. And DxO Photo Lab will automatically select the edges or the subject. So I'm going to try to do this real quick. The one thing is the mask overlay doesn't look really good. So that is unfortunate. And I'm going to try to do this really quick. What you really need to be doing actually is using a combination of the auto mask and the regular masking brush when you're doing like the feet and the edges. So now you can't really see what's happening. If I go to the black and white overlay, you don't see the edges showing correctly and the feathering. So I'm going to go back to the color overlay and I'm going to decrease the exposure to show you what I just masked. So you can see it did an okay job of the edges, but that's just an example of how the auto mask works. It's like it uses edge detection. Unfortunately, the overlay doesn't show very well. So what you need to do is you need to use the like exposure slider or something else just to see what's happening properly. I think DxO Photo Lab will address this in the future. But anyways, let's just increase the saturation and the vibrancy just like that. And remember, this was the original brush right here that I just accidentally brushed there so I can show you the shortcut. So if I press Shift B, it changes to the regular brush. You can see the regular brush options here as well as the brush icon looks a little bit different or the mouse cursor or the cursor if i press shift plus a it changes to auto mask and then i can change the size of the brush by holding the command or control and using the scroll wheel and if i'm on the brush the regular brush i can press and hold the shift key and use the scroll wheel to change the feather so hopefully you guys understand now how all this works together. I did go over the auto mask a little bit fast. So for the auto mask, what you would usually do is use the auto mask and zoom in for the edges and the middle part or the body, just use the regular brush and just paint away. Usually you can do this masking in like one or two minutes. I took a little bit longer just to demonstrate how the auto mask and the brush works. So if you guys enjoyed this tutorial, you know what to do. And as always, live easy, sleep breezy, and stay lovely.